Wilkerson is with us now. Charmaine, I believe you're in West Hollywood? Actually, I'm in North Hollywood at a park that's commonly known as North Hollywood Park near the Valley Plaza in this area. And we found a number of families who we saw gathering before uh, nightfall uh, who wanted to camp out overnight. They don't want to stay in their buildings. Uh, basically, they don't feel it's safe. And you can see, for example, a group over here that has gathered. And uh, over here, you can see a more elaborate setup where uh, they've taken some plastic and made a makeshift tent. Uh, families uh, getting together to stay together where they feel a little more secure. Um, there's a family here. It's uh, Sili, is that your name? Sili Lepe. Sili, tell me, you have about, oh, you have about eight to ten people, mm -hmm. friends and family gathered together. What are your plans? Do you plan to stay out here all night? Uh, yeah, for this night, yes, because it's really hard to and dangerous at home. What exactly makes it dangerous? How? What sort of state is your home in right now? Uh, broke windows and a lot of dishes and... Yeah, all everything they fall down, so it's for it's too hard for us because we really worry about we kids. Here's one of my kids, and here's my mother and my most of my sisters and my sisters in law, and brother in law, my husband. So that's why we've been together to be safe. What about safety? Do you feel safe enough being in a public park with? Many other strangers around. Has everyone been good to you? Oh, so that that way, my husband and my brothers and love they they want to be uh, wake up a little bit, wake up to can we talk? I mean, can be safety because he they want to be safety, <laughs> want okay. to be care with us. Well, thank you. Good luck to you, Cindy. Thank Take you. care. I really and that's just one family. Again, they've made a makeshift tent. And, and really throughout the park, it's uh, hard to see at a distance, but we see little bonfires all over the place. And uh, here you see one group right now of uh, people who've gathered together and uh, cooking their food on an open fire. Now, many people have been warned not to use their barbecues to heat themselves inside a building. However, they can do it outside uh, when they feel it's um, where there is ventilation and it's safe. And here's a member of the group we were talking before. Uh, who's here? Neighbors, friends? Uh, all the family. We, are, we decided to spend the night here because the apartment is a mess and we have babies. Uh, like you see, we have all <laughs> ready there. And let's see, tell me what you have here. You you say as you see. What are we looking at? Blankets and so forth? Blankets far? and um, diapers and bottles. And we have food here. So we decided to spend the night here. Did you have to go to the store to get these or did you have them ready? Uh, we had some things ready and we had to rush to the store. Big line to get in the store to buy milk and all that. What sort of condition is your place in? It's bad. It's real bad. And we live on the, on the second floor building. And uh, as you know, come running down those stairs. <laughs> and who's this here? This is my baby. Oh, Erica. how old is she? <laughs> She's going to be two in uh, next month. Yeah. How did the kids do and how did you guys do being out here with the aftershocks um, that we felt it's, this afternoon? Um, it's bad for them because it's cold. But we think it's better here than being in our apartments because we feel it's shaking. Then we have to go downstairs. And here's better. There's no building or wash or anything feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, take care and good luck to you. Okay, well. Again, we're at uh, North Hollywood Park where you see a number of families gathering. There are really quite a few of them that we see throughout this park, which is oh, a few acres large, and it's at the corner of Magnolia near Tahunga. And uh, again, a lot of people have just set up makeshift camps because they feel it's safer to be outside rather than inside or near their damaged buildings. This is Charmaine Wilkerson reporting live from North Hollywood. Well, who are we, Charmaine, to say that they are wrong? But we can tell you, if you are looking at uh, staying in a public park for the evening, that there are a number of high schools in the Los Angeles area, in the valley, and on this side of the hills, which are offering shelter for the night. They're set up as Red Cross shelters. There are a number of Salvation Army shelters, and we understood that they were offering meals as well. So that's another option that you have, is to check with the local high school. Probably the best option at this point Probably in time. warmer, a lot warmer. And as you know, Channel 7 Eyewitness News will remain on the air throughout the night with continuing earthquake coverage. We'll have the latest updates on quake damage and uh, which freeways and other roads are closed, including alternate routes. We'll also keep you informed on school and other major closings and the locations of shelters for earthquake victims. So please stay tuned to Channel 7 as we continue our live coverage tonight.
You're watching continuing coverage of the Southland Quake on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. It's a very scary experience. My little girl, is, is, that bedroom is right there. All right, we are looking at tape that was shot earlier today of the earthquake that we've been following here in Southern California since 4.30 or thereabouts this morning, as fast as we could scramble onto the air here on Channel 7. And something just fell down in our studio, and both our hearts stopped for just a second. I an earthquake, but I think we're all just a little it was, bit on it. It was loud, and it gave us a start. We're looking at tape, but we have Rick Romero, who is live at the junction of the 5 and 14 freeways, where some horrific damage was done this morning. And let's go to you now, right now. Rick, take yeah. it away. It's easy to see that horrific uh, damage that you just talked about there. You can see a span of uh, Highway 14, the Antelope Valley Freeway, where it would go southbound onto Interstate 5, the Golden State Freeway. I talked to some Caltrans officials, and they were telling me about this particular uh, span coming down. The theory right now is that is that particular section over there, what you see that is still standing, is like a hinge, and they sit one on top of the other. And as that earthquake took place, it slid off to only about a foot of a, of a, of a ledge there. It slid off and dropped straight down. Now, many of these sections, these spans, have been retrofitted with some form of restraint to keep that sort of thing from happening. They could not tell me yet whether this one had been retrofitted, but looking at it and looking at some of the other sections that I've looked around, you don't see much there that would actually hold that particular section in place. They have also told me that there are plans to demolish this all, all of this section, this span that has gone down. And in fact, we may even see crews sometime this evening. They would be coming out with huge backhoes that have hoe jacks on the back of them, they're called. They're giant jackhammers, and they will carve into all of this concrete. And then a bevy of trucks will come in here. They will load those trucks up and dump it at some controlled site where they can uh, you know, remove all of this debris. And then they will start construction. And construction, they say, will take a period of months, not weeks, months. And we're talking about uh, several months at that. Further on up north, where Interstate 5 collapsed, Northbound and southbound spans, those collapse. They've already begun demolition on that. But we cannot uh, see that. We cannot get a live shot from that particular area because it's deep into a canyon. But they've already begun demolition. So it will be not long before this will be cleared. But that will does not mean that traffic will begin to flow through here for some time. Although we did mention earlier, just before the 7 o'clock hour, that old San Fernando Road, has been opened to a certain extent. CHP is escorting cars through a tunneled area and then out through into the Santa Clarita Valley. And there were a number of cars here backed up for miles and miles that were waiting for something, some sort of relief. And that took place just about a half an hour ago. And now we see very few cars being escorted by CHP through there. Although as we look down towards San Fernando Valley, in the south direction from where I am, I can still see a line of cars just setting up there, waiting for their escort to be brought up and brought through as they head northbound. And I'm not sure how long this will, will continue. Caltrans could not tell me exactly what the detour uh, plan is at this point. Uh, we did not have an official spokesperson out here, so we were just getting this information uh, from one of the uh, Caltrans videographers that comes out and videotapes all of this area for use uh, in meetings tomorrow to discuss exactly how they are going to attack all of this. This is Rick Romero reporting live from Highway 14 and Interstate 5. All right, Rick, thank you. Uh, we mentioned a moment ago that we felt an aftershock here. Did you feel it where you are, Rick? We occasionally do feel the uh, aftershocks right here. We're on ground that is not exactly solid uh, because as we noticed earlier when it was daylight, and you probably saw some of our shots, we see uh, rock and debris come down these hillsides here. It's pretty uh, shaky dirt. Uh, but we did not see any additional damage to any of the spans here as far as uh, freeways are concerned. Well, Ann and I thought uh, something had fallen down behind us here, but it turned out that uh, it was, in fact, an aftershock and something was rattling in the studio. I, I think, like most people in Southern California, we do have our earthquake antenna up, and any time there's the slightest bit of movement, we're locking in on it. Uh, you it's can see by the quake cam there, there. <laughs> it uh, wasn't much of one. No. 
now. And uh, we have had hundreds of aftershocks because, uh, as a matter of fact, in the normal day, in the normal course of a day in Southern California, we have a uh, hundred or so after uh, earthquakes. They're very small earth move, very small. Most of them not even reaching one on the Richter scale. Uh, some of these aftershocks, uh, we, are we are showing you our quake cam because if you're near the epicenter, you'll feel them a little bit more than say somebody does out in the Huntington Beach area, for example. What's well, interesting here as we look at this, it's a very nice little map, and first time I've seen it, a little map of where some of the faults are that we are aware of. Uh, but when we saw the, uh, the little computerized map of the aftershocks at Caltech earlier today, they literally were scattered all over the area from Northridge mm -hmm. all the way south into, into uh, Orange County. There have been earthquakes set off by the morning earthquake, little ones, smaller ones, all through the area. And so uh, we both learned something there. I always mm -hmm. thought that aftershocks came on the same fault where the original quake came. Find out that's not true. They kind of spark uh, different shocks in different areas. This is probably uh, the third time uh, a, a fault that uh, we were unfamiliar with has caused problems in the Southland. The Whittier Fault, the Whittier Narrows Fault there had been uh, charted, but uh, not much attention was paid to it. And uh, that one uh, hit us with a pretty good shaker at about eight o'clock in the morning. And then uh, the one out in Landers and the Big Bear area, they too were charted, but uh, were not uh, given much attention. And the same can be now said for the Northridge uh, Fault, because uh, it was not yes. the same fault line that kicked in in 1971. It was, uh, they tell us, uh, maybe 20 miles uh, southeast of uh, that epicenter uh, back in 1971. Right, now we're looking at some of our statistics from today, and I hope that we will be able to get to some school closures for you uh, in just a minute. Um, but these are the numbers as they stand right now. 27 dead, that death rate has gone up just a bit. Uh, and as Mark Coogan was telling us, they are still looking for, they hope to find, perhaps some further survivors in that pancaked apartment building tonight. They're going to be spending the night with high-tech equipment going through and looking there to see if they can find anyone else alive in that uh, terrible apartment crash. And these are some of the private companies which have said that they will be closed tomorrow. And an enormous number of schools have said that they're going to be closed as well. Um, and of course, the mayor has asked everybody to, to stay home if they possibly can mm -hmm. tomorrow. He did ask city employees to come in because their right. services are vitally needed. Uh, we would like to tell all of you to take tomorrow off, but unfortunately, we don't possess that authority here at Eyewitness News. But uh, a phone call to your company uh, tomorrow might suffice, and uh, you might be surprised. Perhaps your, your employer will tell you to stay home because he or she may be doing the same thing. Now, we spoke about a citywide curfew in Los Angeles. The areas where you are not under the curfew are on your screen. Keep in mind this curfew in the Los Angeles area is a mandatory curfew from dusk until dawn. Uh, it has been put into effect by the mayor of Los Angeles and the city council. Earlier, someone referred to it as a discretionary uh, curfew, uh, but it is not. It is a mandatory curfew that was implemented by the mayor of the city council and will be enforced by Chief Willie Williams and the LAPD. Also should point out, Harold, that the city of Glendale has announced a dawn to dusk curfew. So don't be out in Glendale unless you have official business. City of San Fernando announced the same thing sometime earlier. Now this is interesting. Uh, this is what I mentioned earlier, and I, I would like to get a clarification. You and I are on the air live right here. Don't, don't change that graphic on me for a second. Water distribution points, Silmar High School, Kennedy High School, Granada Hills High School. I'm still confused about the fact that we have a curfew in effect. Yet, we have water distribution systems that are open. Are you within your legal rights to go get water and bring it home? Common sense would say yes, but the mayor told us that this curfew meant to stay home. Again, water distribution at Manual Arts High School, Hollywood High, Santa Clarita, at the Glendale Armory. Perhaps someone can uh, let us know here in uh, Studio 52 as to the legality of going out to get water uh, I'll also bring something up to you. Uh, it, it, it's a problem right now in the North San Fernando Valley, and this is portable toilets that are available, and uh, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power says these toilets are available at Woodland Hills, El Camino Real High School, Valley Circle Boulevard and Platte Avenue, Granada Hills, the Balboa Mission Shopping Center, uh, the southeast corner of Balboa and San Fernando Mission Road. 
Northridge Shopping Center at Devonshire and Reseda, uh, Silmar the Shopping Center at Glen Oaks, and Bledsoe. Now, and that's, you know what, I've heard a lot of people upstairs, people from our team here, Eyewitness mm -hmm. News, you come in, they say, well, how'd your ho house hold up? And they say, well, pretty good, except the toilet's broken. The toilet's broken, you know, the we don't toilets have the water, have we can't flush because exactly. the water's uh, been cut off. So it's no joke. All right, we will continue to get a clarification about your legality in moving out to get water or toilets or to go to a shelter. And in the interim, we will check in with Trish Takasuki who uh, brings us up to date on uh, the predicament of some folks at her location. Harold, and as you can imagine, there are thousands of families out in the valley tonight that are just stuck in their homes. They're stuck without power. They're stuck without water. There's not a lot they can do. This curfew is in effect. They are told to stay home. A lot of them are, are st braving it out. They're staying home to protect their property, and plus they have no place else to go. We're here at an area just off of Reseda and Rinaldi, and a lot of the folks in this particular area have all decided to stay home. In fact, most all of them have decided to spend the night of all places in their cars. We've seen a lot of people camping out in their front and backyards, but this, we're with the Singer family now. They're going to spend the night in their car. First of all, Mrs. Singer, tell me about how bad was the quake here? How did you feel? Uh, the jolt was very bad, and we have a lot of damage inside. We have uh, our... Uh, uh, fireplaces all the way down. We have damage in our dining room, our living room. Uh, um, that's mainly the concentration of it. Everything else is just uh, mementos and things that we have acquired, you know, material things. Have you been able to recover from a lot of the shock? Are you still a little jittery? I still am very jittery. If it starts to shake a tiny little bit, we run out immediately and we all meet in front. So we're going to bear the night outside in the cars tonight. Tell me how you're doing. I know you have your sleeping arrangements all set up here. <laughs> how have you been doing with all the other things, with no uh, water, with food, things like that? Well, we have uh, storage of food uh, that we have that we had planned for earthquake. We have water, we have uh, canned goods, we have a can opener. So we had uh, some makeshift dinner tonight and we will have enough food for a couple of days. Good, you were well prepared. Now listen, they're telling us that it may be a few days before you get your power and gas back on. How long are you prepared to kind of continue with this makeshift arrangement? Well, uh, as long as it takes because I don't want the kids to be fearful to be in the house. And uh, when, whenever we have a chance, we're just going in and trying to put things together a little bit. But your choice is to remain here at your home rather than go and stay with friends or relatives elsewhere? Yeah, we'd rather be here all together. My mother is here. We brought her in for Granada Hills. She's homeless today. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's with us, and she'll be with us until we find another apartment for her. And, you know, as long as we're all together, I think we'll be fine. Okay, thanks so much. This is the Singer family out here in the North Valley area, and a lot of families are doing exactly what they're doing. They're spending the night in their cars, and it's supposed to be pretty chilly, but most people have brought out all their sleeping bags, all their comforters, and all their warm clothes, so they're ready to brave the, the chilly temperatures out here. And like they said, they'd rather all stay together and be a family and stay with their property rather than risk leaving this and going to some other areas. Reporting live from Northridge, I'm Trisha Takasugi, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, there are worse places to camp out for a night than Southern California in January. It's not as cold mm -hmm. as it would be in a whole lot of other spots. Fred Anderson is live, we understand, in the San Fernando uh, City area, where I believe there is a curfew underway tonight, as well as in uh, Glendale and Los Angeles. Fred, what can you tell us? Well, if you could hear me right now, our camera, of course, is not on, but I, <laughs> I am on. I know, we have a little boy looking at our camera down there. These are the way, this is the way things go when you go live. And if you're hearing me now, we're going to crank this camera up and turn it on and uh, <laughs> give you a picture. At the moment, we are at the Recreation Center at 3rd and Park in the city of San Fernando. There, there are approximately uh, 185 to 200 people in this room, in this Recreation Center, that are here for the night at this Red Cross shelter. Some 11 shelters at least throughout the San Fernando Valley area. This one in San Fernando has been very busy. And uh, a little later, we're going to go outside and show you where people are actually camping out because they are afraid to stay in a building. But here in this shelter, cots have been set up and more cots are on the way. And the public information officer trying to accommodate all these people is Nancy Alquist. And what are you trying to do with the people who've come here tonight, Nancy? Well, we want to make sure that they have a safe place to sleep, that they are warm, that they have uh, uh, sanitary facilities, and we also have snacks for them for throughout the night. So you're going to make them feel at home and just... Uh... Well, it's at home as you can feel in a shelter. You know, it's not the most comfortable place in the world, but they are here for the moment, and then 
as soon as we get the service centers opened up, we will be able to deal with individual family losses. But right now, it's, you know, the important thing is getting them settled, getting them safe. A little less stress than they had most yes. of today and uh, with all the aftershocks and everything. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, over here, we have some uh, people sitting. And hi. Well, hi there. Tell me what happened with you today. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know, huh? Okay. Well, some of them are a little shy there. Where, where's your mom? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No? No? No, say, pero ¿qué pasó con usted hoy? Todo en la casa. Como dice la canción, todo se derrumbó. Everything destroyed in her house, she's saying. Yeah, todo, todo se cayó, todo ahí, todo el tiradero. Entonces, como siguió temblando, los apartamentos se ladearon hasta la yarda. Están semiladeados. Las paredes y todo. Las paredes, nada más el último está un poco cuarteado y la planta baja only, también. Only, only, oh. un, un agujero. Uh -huh. Aquí en la 65 Park, entre la primera y Avenida Park. Entonces, como tenemos los niños. ¿Cuántos niños? Dos de mi hija y el mío y yo. So you have cuatro. Cinco. Cinco, cinco, cinco. hijos. Somos cinco todos. C cinco todos. Sí. sí. So you sent five in the family, she says, and sí. the, the apartment is totally destroyed. Ya. Yeah. Todo, de, todo desbaratado. Todo está destruido. Sí, todo, ah. todo roto. Ah. Yeah. Que, que pase buenas noches oh, aquí. Que la pasen mejor. Gracias oh, sí. y que haya paz y que haya unión, que no haya desórdenes que no vayamos a andar haciendo vandalismos yeah. y que nos unamos todos, no importa raza, ni credo, ni color. Okay. Okay. She's hoping we have a very, very uh, okay. more peaceful night tonight than she's had the rest okay. of today today. And uh, que tengan buena noche a la familia. It's uh, not an easy thing. A lot of these uh, people have been through a very, very tough day today. And it's uh, something that uh, is hanging over them as they prepare tonight inside of a building. A little later, we're going to go outside and uh, we'll come back here to this park and show you the people who are staying outside tonight. And there's a lot of them out there. Uh, we'll, we'll be back a little later. Reporting live from San Fernando, this is Fred Anderson. Good job, Fred. Thank, Thank you for you, that. Fred. Very interesting. We should keep in mind that many of the immigrants in our area are from countries that have suffered substantial earthquake damage, countries that don't have the California earthquake standards when it comes to buildings and the like. So while you and I might think that we can get through this okay because we have a certain amount of confidence in uh, our building codes and the like, uh, the immigrants, recent immigrants, not just from Central America, Mexico, Central America, but Europe, Armenia, places of this the nature that have had earthquakes before, uh, are very, very frightened uh, uh, because they have been through those devastating earthquakes which have leveled entire villages, which have leveled entire towns, and uh, it'll take them a while to uh, perhaps uh, adjust to the fact that uh, because of our building codes, uh, we fare a lot better when we have an earthquake such as we did today. Uh, not overlooking the fact that uh, we have suffered 27 fatalities and thousands of people have been injured and there are a number of structures are damaged. Mm -hmm. But uh, given what, has ta what usually takes place in other regions of the world when an earthquake of this magnitude hits, uh, we got through this uh, about as well as one could expect. And people who have come from Central America have uh, become veterans of earthquakes. Many of them are veterans of earthquakes that were much bigger than this, too. Mm -hmm. They have had eight-point earthquakes down there in some of those little countries in Central America that have just scared the heck out of people. And you never, you never recover from no, that. You, you never sure forget don't. those experiences. Any, or, I, it took just me get after, it. after the 1971 Silmar earthquake, which hit at 5.59 in the morning. I don't know why these things have to hit while we're all in bed, but that's Mother Nature's way yeah. of saying, stay where you are, I suspect. But uh, it, it took many of us quite a long time psychologically, psychologically to get over that earthquake. Sure. Even, uh, you know, maybe as much as three, four months later, uh, standing uh, on a high rise uh, on the third or fourth floor waiting for the elevator, just the elevator stopping and making the floor move rekindles those thoughts. It, it takes about, quite a while to get over these things. How about lying in bed at night and dreaming that there's been an earthquake and waking yourself up and looking around and going, oh, okay, yeah. it wasn't, it was just my imagination. Uh, that, uh, we can expect a lot those of those kinds of common things feelings, for the next bet. few months. Harold, I believe we have Lieutenant Duncan of Los Angeles Police Department 
on the phone and let's bring him in to tell us how things are looking. Are people observing the curfew tonight? Are the streets looking relatively safe? Lieutenant Duncan. Uh, yes, good evening. Yeah, it appears that we're that there is a compliance to, to the extent that it's just recently been uh, broadcast over the media. Um, the uh, the curfew course is is designed to uh, keep people from loitering uh, uh, in the city streets uh, between the hours of sunrise, sunset and sunrise. Lieutenant Duncan, I raised the question a while ago. We were uh, directing people to where they could pick up some water. Uh, they could find uh, toilets that are operative in the North San Fernando Valley. And then it occurred to me that a curfew was in effect. Are these people uh, within the law to go out and to, to get water at the locations, uh, to go off to a shelter or to, uh, to use these facilities that we've been putting on the air? Well, to the, in, in regard to your question about the shelters, the, the part of the curfew law itself as it was written directed that shelters be open to people who otherwise wouldn't have some place to stay. Uh, just so that they would not find themselves on the street uh, during the during the uh, curfew curfew period. How and about going out for water. Well, again, this, this this is not this curfew is not meant to penalize people. This is we recognize the fact that people are going to find themselves needing to get home from work or to work. They're going to have to tend to medical emergencies. Things are going to to occur, which is going to require them to be out. Uh, it, it says that, that you're not to be out on the streets between sunset and sunrise, but the, the final paragraph or the final part of that also directs officers and their supervisors to exercise discretion in, uh, in the enforcement of that law. We understand this is a very difficult period for, for everyone in the city. Uh, we want to make it safe. We want to avoid those situations where uh, those bent on illegal activity can gather to engage in that uh, and yet provide for the safety and the necessity of the people in the community. So really the curfew is meant to give you another tool to keep things quiet. That's, that's exactly right. Has there been more evidence of looting problems since earlier today? Chief Williams said that there had been some arrests made in the afternoon. Has there been anything new in that line? Any other looting uh, happening? No, not that I'm aware of. It's it's been relatively quiet this evening. In, in those terms, uh, of course, the the uh, public safety agencies are are busy at work, uh, trying to do those things that uh, will you know where we'll have we can get our electricity going again. We're going to have some problems with water and the and the nature, and everybody's working very hard to deal with those problems. So we're busy but the streets in terms of, of criminal activity seem to be uh, seem to be quiet and everything seems to be in good order good deal lieutenant uh, you're on 12 hour shifts yes we are and we'll remain that way for some period of time and how are things at the station house when these aftershocks come through do you uh, you men and women feel the same way we do get a little startled well it, it, we certainly do and, and thinking that this particular building that we're in here is it was built in 1956 it, it's amazing how much it can shake and sway and still kind of hang together where oh, is your building? Yeah. Are you downtown? We're in, the, we're in the main police building in downtown at Parker Center. Parker Center, oh, 1956, yeah. huh? Yeah, I believe that's what the, that was the year. It's leaking a little bit today, but uh, oh. it seems to be holding together all right. Okay, thank you so much, Lieutenant, and uh, continued good luck as uh, the LAPD continues on 12-hour shifts. Uh, we, it's good to hear that uh, Los Angeles remains uh, calm. Yes. Also, uh, virtually, uh, uh, crime is down at this time, and uh, in particular, uh, looting has uh, ceased. Uh, hard to imagine that uh, there are people that would uh, jump at an opportunity such as that, but it does happen in, uh, in an area, in areas where there are uh, disasters. It's not something that's indigenous to Southern California, but these things nope. uh, kind of make your stomach turn just a little bit when you hear about them. Yes, they do. We're looking at tape, obviously, from earlier today because it is dark right now, and we would like, if we can, to show you the schools that we know are closed tomorrow, if we can pop up our graphic of the school closures. These are some of the private schools, Campbell Hall in North Hollywood, St. Casimir Elementary.